We left a quite hot and sweltering Phuket at the end of April, in sake of cooling down on one of the more than 7,000 exotic islands of the Philippine Sea. We had three weeks ahead. Only one week we had chartered the catamaran for a sail in a diving safari. The rest was up to us. No plan, no in advance booked tickets, no hotel reservations. Just a real adventure. First flight, Phuket over Kuala Lumpur to Manila. For me, it was the first visit to this country of islands. Bert, on the contrary, has been there two years ago already, for a month, at the beginning of his new nomad life, after quitting from Germany. I can't say much about another Asian megapolis, as everywhere the skyscrapers with huge department malls and business centers have a neighborhood extremely poor people living just in the streets, a lot of traffic and a lot of garbage and dust. Look at this face. That's how you a person before a good dinner. This is little fruit called calamansi juice. Do you know what he's eating? This is oyster and it's not for him. This one. What it is? At least what kind of meat? Ribs. <laughs> After spending a day in strolling around the city, we decided to examine the island. And in the next morning, we went to the bus station and bought our tickets for a trip to the north. To the UNESCO World Heritage City, Vigan. What we have quite painful learned about the local bus transportation on the Philippines. First, buy your ticket in advance. If available, invest in and insist on your booked VIP seat. Except you are keen to fight for a place with other passengers at the check-in. Second, absolute must-have during a bus trip on the Philippines, winter clothes. Even more crazy than ties, Filipinos love to have aircons blowing, of course always to the max, just to ride on them. And buses on the Philippines have definitely the coldest aircons with the strongest running fans I've ever experienced. Our 10 hours ride back to Manila presented me one infected ear and an infected throat, which makes diving quite painful and even dangerous. Some days I could only go for snorkeling, which was nice too, because of the real amazing underwater world of the Philippines. So, welcome to Vigan, the city where during our three days visit, we saw only four other foreign tourists, but a lot of locals on holidays. And for many of them, we have been one of the must make a self service attractions of Vigan. This small city is one of the oldest in the country, and it's famous for its preserved Spanish colonial and old Asian architecture. True, downtown looks like the left decoration after shooting a movie about the 16th century. Cobblestone streets, rustic mansions and real horse-drawn carriages as a tourist attraction. Quite sad for us to watch the lean horses pulling the wagons fully loaded with tourists. Surprisingly, we like the atmosphere and spend there longer than planned. But this time we managed to visit a few interesting landmarks. First of all, we tasted all recommended restaurants you should try out. The historical Cafe Leon in the evening with the open terrace, where I like the Filipino mango roam is digestive. Very heavy and unhealthy, but so tasty empanadas. What is that? It's a type of baked or fried pasty consisting of pastry and filling. It may include meat, cheese, corn or other ingredients. Of 
course we try them all. Also, you should not miss to visit the old Bantai Watchtower with the bell built in 1591 to look out for invading parents. The word Bantai means guard in Tagalog. And even though the Bantai Watchtower was turned into a bell tower by the nearby church in 1857, it still was used as a watchtower during the two world wars due to its strategic location. Be careful inside the tower. I hit twice my head going upstairs on the spiral staircase. In every new country, I'm looking for an old traditional house that's preserved as a museum nowadays. Just to have a feeling how wealthy locals used to live. Likely in Vigan I found one, the Sikwa Mansion Museum. This century-old mansion was built in 1830 and owned by one of the presidents of the Philippines' wife, Donna Alicia Sikwa Curino. I hope I pronounce it correctly. It consists from two floors and you can easily fly back in time just going on the second floor by the original wood stairs. After our short trip back in time, we returned into 21st century and decided to take a tricycle for going to the beach to see the sunset. Uh, we are on an island and here must be a city beach somewhere, right? Did you know that many Asian people can't swim? They live on the seashore and some of them have never been in the open water. So that's the clue why our taxi driver made big eyes after we share our destination. You're welcome! <laughs> but he brought us to the city. And it was one of the highlights of our trip. the shore of the real open ocean with black sand and total beautiful solitude. This direction is Taiwan, Hong Kong, Vietnam. Run about Two, three, four thousand kilometers away. How do you know? <laughs> Guess what we did next? Right, swimming next and enjoying the amazing spectacular Sunset Orchestra with a colorful final. We promised to each other that we will come definitely back, but next time with Gulliver and our Lilliput. Another flight from Manila to Cebu, and we met up with our future crew. Okay, we arrived at Marina and we are waiting for our catamaran. I guess it's just there. You see blue one? We went to one of the local marinas in Carmen, Cebu. All Germans, all men, and only one Russian girl. 
Ups. Nicht wie krank werden, Marco. Women first. Ich hab gehört. I speak English. I speak English. Yeah. <laughs> so about bad stuff, you can speak German. And I was surprised once again about the living conditions of the Philippines. And before becoming too sad, the owner of the boat and his lovely wife picked us up and transferred us to the East Catamaran. Enjoy! You'll be our flight and home for the next seven days. Here! Here! Okay, okay. He's done. Yeah, yeah, because two same time, it is shaking. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. And then go to go straight to the front. Yeah, thank you. Straight to the front. Straight to the front. Yes. Bachelor life is finished. Bachelor life is finished. Did you do everything? Yes, of course. Good. The sun is shining, the beer is cooling, the company is in a good mood. What else do we need for a fantastic holiday? Right, some attractions. Let's go diving. The Philippines are worldwide famous of those amazing sports for diving and snorkeling. You can find here so many species, from giant whale sharks to the tiny pygmy seahorse. Along with giant turtles. Okay, maybe not so giant, but pretty big in comparison to me. Well, one is one thing from my bucket list. Swimming with turtles. The big advantage of traveling by boat is depending on no one in choosing where to go, where to dive, how long and where to stay for a night. And seven days is not enough. It's just raise your appetite, you know? Let me tell you a bit from our dives. Every day we lifted up the anchor in the early morning and changed our location, mostly even more than two times per day, in order to visit as much spots as possible. But to one place we came back three times. What is so attractive about this place, Kabiliao Island? There's a stunning bay completely covered with flowering corals. Literally, your dive plan is reaching the wall and descending down as deep as you want. The deepest point we've been was around 36 meters. We descend along the wall and watching on one side the live blossom moving garden and the deep blue space on the other side. That brought us a slight feeling of awareness. Honestly, I was looking a few times into the deep dark blue, expecting the appearance of something really big. Exactly at that spot I met my first turtle. But it happened not at once. It 
happens after everyone saw if you swam with them, shared photos with them. So when I was close to be very upset, I've met my first big turtle. Such a chill, beautiful creature. Lately I went again with the snorkeling mask and saw a couple of them. I joined them for a while. Lost our boat, found our boat, come back. <laughs> 